Hi, welcome into the second part of our seven part series on the chakra system. My name is Nicole Hudson. I'm the founder of Wander Freely Yoga. I'm a certified Soluna life coach, and I've been working with Maine General for a year and a half now. Last week, we talked about Muladhara Chakra, or the first chakra, and it's really a grounded quality, right? So when we have that sense of grounding, when we have that sense of connection with our physical body, we can start to feel a bit more safety, sense of self, sense of confidence. And from that foundation, we can start to move up the system. Before we get talking about our second chakra today, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into what is the purpose of working with the chakras. We talked about last week what they were, and so why do we want to work with them, right? We work with them on the mat, and everything we do on the mat is an experimentation lab for what we do off the mat in our lives. So when you're working with the chakra system, it really is an opportunity to take a look at how you're interacting both with yourself and in the relationships within your life. And oftentimes you'll hear, and we'll talk about it today, this idea of excessive and deficient characteristics. So if you notice yourself falling into one of these categories, it might mean that there's an imbalance within a specific chakra. And the purpose of these practices is if you're deficient or excessive is to bring yourself back to center. And as we mentioned last time, there's no such thing as perfect balance all the time. And so it's a constant exploration. And that's part of the beauty of the practice of yoga and the practice of these different techniques is that we're always learning, we're always exploring, and we're always finding our balance only to go off balance again, right? So we're constantly exploring ourselves and how we interact with the world. And the chakra system is a beautiful way to really tap into how you're connecting and how you would like to connect. So let's dive a little bit deeper into Svadhisthana. The second chakra, also known as the sacral chakra, is located in, located in the abdominal region. So this will be the abdomen, a genitals, low back, and the hip area. It's located just above the first chakra, so we'll start to work our way up the system. The central issues associated with the second chakra are sexuality and emotions. The goals associated with it are fluidity, pleasure, healthy sexuality, and feeling functions. This is a very water-based element. Uh, the, the element associated with Svadhisthana is water. And so it's very fluid. It's very emotion-based. The right that is associated is the right to feel and the right to want. Developmental stages are six to 12 months. The identity is emotional identity. And while this is a completely different workshop, um, if we were to look at the koshas or our energetic bodies, we have our physical body, we have our mental emotional body. So just as much as we tap into the physical body with the first chakra, we want to tap into our emotional bodies with this second chakra. The demon associated with it is guilt. Excessive characteristics would be overly emotional or having a hard time when you're feeling emotions to not go over the top, poor boundaries, sex addiction, obsessive attachments. And so on the flip side of that, we look at some of the deficient characteristics, which would be frigidity, impotence, rigidity, emotional numbness. So on one side, emotions might control our lives. And on the other side, we might have a very hard time experiencing or expressing our emotions and also fear of pleasure. As mentioned earlier, the element associated with the second chakra is the water element. So again, very fluid, very emotional. If you're a Pisces, you get it. <laughs> and the color associated is orange. The seed sound or bija mantra is vam, V-A-M, vam. And so as we find our grounding in the first chakra, we start to move up into the second chakra, this place of fluidity. It's also a place where we can really start to express our creativity. We start to explore what are our likes and our dislikes, what are we drawn towards, what are we repelled from. And so we're starting to get into this sense of 
I feel safe in the base and my foundation, and now I can move up into a bit more fluidity and creativity in my life and start to explore what it is that I like and what do I want. And so the next few moments, we'll go through a pretty fluid, watery, brief practice. It's going to be an opportunity to get out of kind of the stiffness that we can sometimes experience in life and also in our practice and give you a little bit permission to, to get creative, right? So let this be what you need it to be. Um, maybe close your eyes because sometimes it can be really hard to get into the second chakra and to let yourself I do this a lot, right? But it's like this water element to let yourself feel very free and flowy. So this is an opportunity to really go for it, to express yourself in a way that you need to express yourself and to experience um, some of the benefits that come from that expression. So go ahead and we'll start in a comfortable seat. If you'd like, you can bring yourself up onto a blanket or a towel. And you can find yourself in a cross-legged position. Palms can come down onto your knees or onto your thighs. And if it does feel safe for you, allow your eyes to close fully. If you prefer to keep your eyes open, find a soft gaze somewhere in front of you. Take a moment to tap into your breath and start to notice where is your breath landing in your body. Is it in your belly? Is it higher up into your chest? And on your next inhale, breathe all the way from the base of your belly up through your ribs. Feel your ribs expand as you breathe all the way up into your collarbones. And then exhale, send everything back out. Let's take this twice more deep inhale. Deep exhale. One more inhale all the way up, full capacity of your breath. Exhale everything out. Option to leave your eyes closed or slowly open the lids of your eyes. And allowing your legs and lower body to stay more or less grounded, start to take some gentle circles with your torso. And so you'll start to feel pretty quickly if there's parts in the body that are really holding or gripping. And see if you can send your awareness to those areas, start to soften a little bit so you can find whatever organic movement or natural movement you want to take care. And so you can make these circles as big or as slow and small as you want. Maybe you start to bend into the elbows, you let your head drop down a little bit. And so letting your upper body get nice and fluid, finding a circular quality to your movement, and then very gently start to slow it down and take it in the other direction. So kind of just stirring the pot. Oftentimes when you hear about Svanistana, we're talking about kind of this water bowl. So if you imagine a bowl of water kind of sitting in the pelvic girdle or the area in the hips, you can kind of imagine that you're stirring that bowl, kind of stirring the water, moving the energy around. And then slowly start to bring yourself back to neutral. Gently stack your shoulders back up over your hips and let your body more or less stay still, but notice if you still feel the quality of movement within your breath, within the energy. Tap into that quality of movement and now start to feel yourself rock forward and back. So the hips will start to move to the front as your torso leans forward to the back, as your torso leans back. An option to keep this gentle sway from front to back. You might start to, as you inhale, roll your shoulders back, lift your heart forward. So it's a seated cow spine, 
And then as you exhale, draw your navel in, tuck your chin down towards your chest for a seated cat. Again, inhale, start to lift up through your heart. And as you exhale, send it back. And so as you move, just like you did in your circles, taking this as fast, as slow as you need, letting your movement be as big or as small as you need. And then again, if there's any sort of creative expression here that you would like to incorporate, please feel free to do so. Let's take two more here, rocking forward and back, feeling the extension of the spine, the rounding of the spine. And then come back to a neutral spine. Once more, take a full breath in here. Maybe you still feel that wave-like quality. And then transition on to hands and knees. So if you have a blanket or towel, this might be a nice place to unravel it. We are going to have a knee down position, so you might want to bring your support underneath for a little extra cushion. And we'll come to a tabletop, and right away step your right foot through between your hands. So knee will be over your ankle or slightly behind your ankle. We don't want to press it forward because that will cause excess pressure on the, the knee joint. So let's keep the knee above the ankle or slightly behind. Walk your hands up onto your right thigh. And take a moment for us to lift up through your torso. Think of pressing your left foot, top of your left foot down to the ground, just as much as you press the bottom of your right foot down to the ground. As you inhale, lift your arms up and overhead. As you exhale, start to send your hips to the back of your mat, send your palms back, and then pull your right toes up. So I'm not totally straightening my right leg, but I'm sending the hips back in order to lift my right toes as my torso drops. And then plug back into your front right foot, drop your hips low, lift your arms up, send your gaze to the sky. And exhale, hips back, heart drops down. Let's take this three more times. Inhale, press down as you lift up. Exhale, reach back as you dive down. Twice more. Inhale to lift. Exhale, lower. One more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Come back to your low lunge. One breath in. As you exhale, bring your hands to frame your front foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee. Step your right foot back to high plank, stay here for a full breath in. As you exhale, release back down to hands and knees, untuck your toes, walk your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, drop your belly, arch your back towards cow. And then exhale, firm press down to round into cat. Twice more, inhale, drop your belly to arch. Exhale, press down as you round. One more. Inhale here. Exhale. Come back to a neutral spine. Perhaps you tent up onto your fingertips for a little more height as you step your left foot through between your hands. Set up your foundation first. So left knee is going to be slightly behind or above the left ankle. Walk your hands up onto your left thigh, lift up through your torso first. So find your foundation, right? We find the root chakra, muladhara, we found that foundation. Once we feel steady in our foundation, we can start to find our creative expression. So as you inhale, take your arms up and overhead. As you exhale, send your hips back, left toes pull towards you, little straightening into that left leg. And then inhale, reground, lift your arms up. Exhale, send your hip back as you bow your heart down. Three more. Inhale, lift up, hips drop. Exhale, hips back, heart drops. Two more. Big inhale to lift. Big exhale to lower. Last one. Inhale, lift. Exhale back. Reground your left foot. Inhale to your low lunge. One breath in. 
Exhale, hands come down, frame your front foot, tuck the right toes, lift your right knee, step back to high plank, full breath in. Exhale, release your knees down to the ground. This time, take your knees about as wide as your mat, toes together, let your hips drop back, forehead down to the floor or a block. Walk your hands out a little bit further for a child's pose. Breathe into your low back. Breathe into your hips. And three more cycles of breath. Press down into your palms as you transition back onto hands and knees. Walk your hands under your shoulders. Place your knees under your hips. And either crisscross your ankles or sweep your feet off to the side as you transition back to a seat. You can refold your blanket and come to sit up onto your blanket for support. Let your hands find your knees or your thighs, option to close down your eyes, and once more breathe into your body. Notice any energy that is still swirling around. Take one more cycle of breath in through your nose. Exhale everything out with a sigh. If your eyes are closed, gently open the lids of your eyes once more. And so oftentimes when we talk about the second chakra, we talk about um, practices in yoga, you might notice that teachers tend to guide a lot of hip work. And that's because the hips are associated with the second chakra and a lot of that emotion and watery quality that we find when we move in that part of the body. And so if you are ever doing a yoga practice or asana practice, and you're doing a lot of hip work, and you notice emotions are coming up, now hopefully there's a little bit better understanding as to why, right? Because our emotions are very much tied into the second chakra, tied into our hips, tied into low back. So if you start to notice that tears might start to flow when you do hip work, uh, just know that that's a release and just know that that is part of working through whatever excessive or deficient characteristics might be present. Um, and that's okay. So really take your time with this chakra. It's one that um, can be a little bit more challenging because there are a lot of emotions involved. So be kind to yourself, be gentle to yourself and take the time to look inward and give yourself plenty of time to rest after you work the second chakra and also make sure that you hydrate with lots of water as well. So thank you for tuning in. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. And I look forward to joining you next time where we'll look at our sense of power, our sense of confidence um, with our third chakra. Namaste.